Let me show you how you can make this light sensitive lamp with an Arduino and just a few components. Hi guys, it's Oli here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video I'm going to show you how to use this light sensor and an Arduino to create a light sensitive lamp. And we are also going to talk about a new function in the Arduino coding, the analog read function. But first to understand this, we have to understand really voltage dividers. I'm going to use a 10K resistor here and connect it up to the rail of the supply and you will see this voltage gradient across the resistor. If I divide it up to 10 equal pieces, then you will see that the resistance from ground potential is going to be respectively 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 kilo ohms. At the other end is of course 10 kilo ohms. And these are going to be voltages which could be measured on those points. This is how a potentiometer is working. But um, how does that work with this photoresistor? I'm going to connect it up this way to create a voltage divider network. And I'm going to connect the middle point to an analog pin on the Arduino. I just chose A0. It works like this. When this sensor gets a lot of light, its resistance goes close to zero. So the voltage measured at A0 pin is going to be close to 5 volts. When the this sensor is in darkness, I measured its uh, resistance. It was going close to 300 kilo ohms. So then the measured voltage at A0 is going to be roughly 0 volts. But how does the microcontroller turn this voltage into usable data? For that we will have to introduce a new subject and that is ADC, as you can see it on the top, and that goes as analog to digital converter. What it does, it measures a voltage and calculates a number out of that. It's based on a linear graph, meaning if it's zero volt, this number is going to be zero. And in the case of an Arduino, if it's five volts, that number is going to be 1023 and anything in between. So this is going to be the schematics I'm using for this project. Pretty simple. You can pause it if you need to. I'm going to start the soldering process just very briefly. So this is basically our voltage divider and the A0 pin connected on the middle. And I'm connecting to plus five volts here, the end with, of the uh, sensor and to ground, I'm connecting the end with the resistor. That is a very simple uh, mm, schematic, so to say. So of course, this needs some code. So we can have a look at the code section to see how it is being done. So as I mentioned to you, the main point here is the analog read function. So in the setup, you will see serial begin. We don't care of that now. It only, that only makes it possible for me to see values on my computer screen. We don't need to go into that. But I'm going to set analog pin zero as an input because we want to measure something there. And here comes the magic. Serial print line is nothing else again just to send data to the computer and analog read zero, A0 is where we are reading the data from that pin and converting it into those numbers. So here you see the numbers. This is the value I'm getting on the analog pin. And you see, as I'm covering it with my hand, this value decreases. The more I cover, the more it decreases because the less light the sensor gets, meaning the higher its uh, resistance is, so the voltage on this analog pin is going lower. Now I turn off the lamp, you see, and it went to 530-ish. And I can, I will cover it just in a moment here with a black plastic object, and it can go all the way down to zero. So this is how it works, and this is the number which we are going to use in the following project, to estimate what is the ambient light in an environment and do an action based on that. I even checked the sensor, this is the resistance of the sensor, how it goes in direct sunlight. So there we measure like somehow, somewhat like 150 ohms, 120 ohms, which is not zero, but it's close to zero. But you see, this could be even used to check during the day how many hours was it sunny and how many hours was it overcast, if you would 
want to do such thing. It is also possible to do. So in this next one, I the only change is that I set the digital pin 13, which is the onboard LED on the Nano, and I introduced an if statement here. So anything in the bracket of the if statement, if it's true, then what is after the if is being executed, meaning if the analog read is less than 900, the lamp goes on, the LED goes on. If it's higher than 900, because there is the else statement, that onboard LED goes off. So that's the onboard LED. Now we are above 900. As you remember, the lamp when was on, it was around 960. But as I cast some shadow on the sensor, the lamp goes on. Of course, now this is very high number, this 900. But as you can see, the sensor has no problem to, to sense quite fast changes. This could be used for a lot of things, actually, because this can handle very high frequencies, of course. So now I'm going to change this value from 900 to 800. That means it needs a stronger shadow, meaning even less light to activate the LED. And let's see how that goes. It's maybe not too easy to see the difference, but now I have to move my hand more above the sensor for the lamp to go on. So let's check with it 700. I'm just uploading that code. And supposedly it should be even more in the shadow range to, to turn on. Not yet. There. You see? So it's like almost there. But... Uh, Let's have a, an even smaller number. This I just show so that you can play around with it. I set it to 500 now. You can play around with it because different environments need different settings, but this can be fine tuned. You see now it's in completely in shadow, but I have to even block it more and more and more and more and more, and there it turns on. So it just depends on what kind of settings you want to use. But how can we turn this into somewhat a useful project? Because this is nice and, uh, <laughs> and interesting, but now I'm just uh, soldering up here two LEDs, soldering together negative leads, the cathodes, and then I put one uh, current limiting resistor on each of the positive leads of the LEDs, and I just soldered them to digital pin 4 and 9. This is arbitrary. I could have chosen any other pin. It was just uh, comfortable to do it this way. And I wanted to use two pins because I want to do an interesting thing here. So I'm connecting up the ground, of course, to the ground wire. Here you will see a schematic in a moment because it's, a, it's also a very simple setup. So that's how I connected them up. And then uh, let's have a look at the code and what I'm planning to do with this. So as you can see, I set the two pins as outputs. And then here I put an interesting thing. I said, if the analog read is less than 800, then we're going to turn on one of the LEDs, but the other one is going to be off. If it's less than 650, meaning it's even darker, then we will have both the LEDs on. And if it's else, meaning any other situation, meaning if the value is bigger than 800, then none of the LEDs are going to be lit. You see, like this, depending on how dark it is, Either one, two, or zero LEDs are lit. This can be used for a sunset or, or whatever situation when the light is changing. And here is a project now. Both the LEDs are having at the same threshold. It was roughly 300 in this case. But when I turn the lamp on, this lamp goes on for me. This could be used really for dawn so that it's turning on automatically. You don't need to bother with that. Guys, if you have anything to say or any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I hope you learned something from this video. Check out my other videos if you're interested in this kind of subject. And please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.